mouthpieces. Mouthpieces are a huge, huge, huge part of sound production on the saxophone. Now, I don't know about other instruments, but saxophones are that instrument that you hear and you think seductive moves, you think all of this stuff. Now, a lot of this stuff is really cultivated by the mouthpiece and the reed setup and even sometimes the ligature. Now, my friend Joe, he says reeds and ligatures, well, ligatures themselves are more of a good luck charm. They make you feel like, you know, you can play better even when, you know, you might you're not you know, they do change sound up. For instance, you have your Van Doren um optimum ligature with three different pressure plates. Yeah, they do control the um the sound quality somewhat and they do yield to certain genres more than others. So they do um maybe ones tend to rock or jazz and classical. Those are the main ones when it comes to instruments that I've, you know, come in contact with. Rock, jazz, and classical. You know, classic being the traditional music, jazz being the more contemporary music, and rock being more contemporary. You know, stuff like that. So, um, when you are choosing your reed or mouthpiece setup, first, the mouthpiece. Now, the mouthpiece is a, um, a wonderful tool if you can buy the best or, or a good one. Now, when I say um, mouthpieces are wonderful tools, mouthpieces can cost you from nine dollars to about seven hundred or eight hundred dollars, roughly. So you can imagine what's been put into these mouthpieces to have such a wide price range. You can get something as cheap as an uh, a, a plastic mouthpiece to a, a, a hard rubber mouthpiece to a or hard rubber slash ebonite mouthpiece. You can get um, some metal mouthpieces. You can get gold carotid mouthpieces. You can get silver mouthpieces. You can get, you know, different all different types of mouthpieces that yield different sounds for different things. A lot of metal jazz mouthpieces are well, jazz mouthpieces, and um, there are also rock mouthpieces that tend to be metal. There are also um, other mouthpieces. Most most saxophone players actually go with either a metal mouthpiece as performing professionals. The thing the thing about it is when you're a performing professional, what you need is a big sound and those metal mouthpieces tend to give you that big sound. The negative side about the metal mouthpiece is that it yields to whatever temperature you are outside. So, <laughs> you know, if anybody's a hardcore music person or just knows about music in general, they know that the, the actual temperature of the horn really does affect the tuning of the horn. That's the bad side about metal mouthpieces. But a lot of people do choose Ebonite like me. I got a hard rubber Ebonite mouthpiece. Um, now, um, this, what it does is, it, since it's hard rubber, Think about blowing into a, uh, a rubber balloon. It's not just like blowing into thin air. It covers it. Your, 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 your sound or your air is covered. That's pretty much what a hard rubber mouthpiece does. It covers your sound and keeps it from being extremely bright. You know, uh, it's like blowing into, you know, like some hard rubber. That's pretty much what it does is covering your sound. Much like the Robin uh, ligature, it's covering your sound. Metal, metal ligatures go the same way. Metal ligatures tend to allow the reed to vibrate more freely. Now, they might be designed in a certain way to have the vibration certain, but ligatures are much like mouthpieces. And then you have your beginner plasticky reed uh, mouthpieces that um, don't cost that much, maybe $7, who, you know, are manufactured just to get the, the, the product out there. It's not to yield to any to certain tone. It's just to be out there. Now, um, uh, one um, big thing is um, a good mouthpiece is for an intermediate person who doesn't want to spend money. Cloud Lakey mouthpiece. Now, Cloud Lakey mouthpiece gives you this humongous sound. Now, if you're not ready for a humongous sound yet or blowing and putting air in the horn just to get a sound out, you might not be ready for this. But it's a good mouthpiece to uh, with the hard rubber style mouthpieces that are about 70 bucks. You know, you can probably get them for 60 if you find them, you know, depending on where you find them online. And then um, I have an intermediate mouthpiece that's, you know, a little chunkier in price, you know. You know, it's Van Dorn V16, and that's really, really good. It uses itself to jazz, but it's kind of in the middle. It kind of has no genre base, but if 
Um, see, the opening of the mouthpiece does make a big difference too. If it's big and open, it's going to have a big sound. If it's really, really close, it's going to have a closed sound and a darker sound. You know, um, darker sounds tend to go for classical mouthpieces. Bright, bigger, open chambered mouthpieces tend to go for jazz mouthpieces. Uh, the reed matters also. If you have a, a, a reed with a lot of resistance, which, which, which is really open on the mouthpiece, it's going to have a bigger sound. But if you have a dark mouthpiece, you're going to have a big, you know, so, so if say you have a Selmer Sea Star, which is a prime, you know, classical mouthpiece, that has a small, um, small opening on it. But if you have a size 5 reed like I had, it's going to be a big classical sound. The sound's still going to be dark, but it's going to be big. And the same thing goes for jazz mouthpieces. You have a big opening on a jazz mouthpiece, you probably want to get a more a softer reed or a reed with less resistance to close in the gap so you don't have to blow that much. And this will give you still a big jazz sound because it's an open mouthpiece. So, you know, you can still play around with this, you know, rock goes the same way. Rock and jazz mouthpieces tend to go about the same, you know, like say if you were hearing Baker Street. Baker Street is more like a rock sound with a jazzy saxophone on it. It's probably got a jazz mouthpiece on the player. So, you know, Duke Off is a really good brand. Jody Jazz is a really good brand. I play Van Doren. Um, but, yeah, play around with this stuff, you guys. Um, mouthpieces could, you know, take you your sound from here to there, but you got to be able to put in the work to cultivate that sound and make it good. Because even if you have a good mouthpiece, if you don't know how to, you know, use technique and actually blend with that mouthpiece, you're not going to sound like anything except somebody with an expensive mouthpiece. My name is Devin and I hope this helps.